So, <laughs> you should, okay, good, it's not good. <laughs> So, I want to ask you a question, and Cynthia touched on it in Children's Church, but uh, before I ask you this question, I want you to know, sorry, my, my talk actually involves a little <coughs> kids participation, so, you know, you're going to have to help me out a little. So, first of all, I want to know how many of you in the audience, just by show of hands, have ever been overwhelmed, stressed, burdened, or worried? <laughs> yeah, I see very few hands that didn't go up. Yeah, so <laughs> I think it's pretty safe to say most of us have felt that way. Um, I don't know if any of you can really relate to this. But I'm sure you can. Um, I myself am a worrier. I have always been a worrier, and I tend to take after my grandmother. Uh, who, even though was a wonderful woman, could worry you to death over a situation. Um, I remember my mother, who at one time was in her 40s, working late and driving late. Uh, my grandmother would call her very, very early the next morning to check on her because, of course, she'd been up all night worrying about her 40-year-old daughter. You know, and now as I've gotten older, I, I realized that that just is the way mothers are. You know, you can be, you know, 80 and your mom's still alive and she's still be worrying about you, right? I mean, you know, that's just the way life is. Um, moms just don't ever quit worrying about their kids, do they? They don't. Well, my grandmother, uh, she was a very special lady to me. She was, she was a wonderful Christian lady, but uh, she had a pretty massive heart attack later in life that actually killed a large portion of her heart. And because of that, she really didn't, she couldn't do a lot of activity. She was pretty housebound. And she would, uh, like I said, she worried a lot. And so she would have this pill book, this pill book that listed all the medications, you know, that you're not supposed to mix with this and you're not supposed to mix with that. And she, of course, herself took a lot of medication. So every day she would go through and she would read, you know, all the medications that she's not to, supposed to mix. And she would reread her pills to make sure. And one day this pill book went missing. Oh, Lord forbid that this pill book went missing. And she worried herself to death trying to find this stupid book. And she started, you know, looking for it. She turned the house upside down, but she couldn't find it. Then she unfortunately started blaming members of the family. Well, you have taken my pill book. No, we haven't taken your pill book. Why would we want your pill book? You know, well, unfortunately, she never did find her pill book, and she worried about it until the day she passed. And after she passed, we found the book, <laughs> of course. But, you know, she did. She worried about that forever. Well, like I said, I can be a worrier, and I'm a lot like my grandmother. I, I tend to worry about even stranger things. Um, I have been known to worry about my dogs while we're on vacation. And sure, they're pets, and you know, I get a little concerned, but I tend to worry. And they're like my furry children. Uh, even though we have friends staying at the house, feeding them, taking care of them, never letting them out of this, their sight, I still worry. Well, I also have this irrational fear that one day my small 10 pound dog is gonna go outside and get picked up by a hawk. I, I don't know, but, you know, I know it's irrational, I know, but I do, I worry. I do, well, uh, so anyway, those are things that I worry about in my life, but you know, here as the youth director here at the church, I tend to worry about a little bit of different things. Uh, you know, how many students are going on this trip? Will they listen to what I actually have to say to them tonight? Um, do they know that they're cared for and loved? You know, will they accept Jesus and live for him? Am I getting through or am I just banging my head against a brick wall? Uh, what can I do to get them more involved? Why aren't more students showing up? You know, those are the things I worry about at my job. So I have much more rational fears there. Um, but these are things that I stress over. These are some of the burdens that I bear. And rather than allowing God to take control, I take all of it in and I carry those things around with me, which isn't really good or healthy. But God put me in a situation a while back that allowed me to trust him even more, uh, even if I didn't really understand what I was going through at the time. 
A few years ago, uh, my husband and I were going through some, some life changes, and he was starting a career move, even though uh, we were unsure of what, where we'd really end up. But because of, uh, because of this career change, we ended up with some job loss for a while, and it resulted in some financial hardship. Uh, we really and truly had to rely on one another. We had to start budgeting everything and do something that was very scary for us. And that was that we had to trust that God was actually going to provide for us and take care of our needs. What was amazing about this time in our lives is that as I look back on it, sure there were times that we were a little stressed, but overall, I think that by allowing God to step in, and guide us, we were actually less stressed at that time than we are now. I think that going through that hardship, we trusted God more in that hard time than we did even now, you know. Uh, but, you know, we faced the real possibility of not finding a job, of losing our house, lots of things going wrong, and yet I stand here telling you that, you know, rather than worrying or stressing out in that situation, we really did give it to God, and he did some pretty incredible things. Uh, first off, as I said, Chris didn't have a job for a while, but you, our wonderful church family and congregation, uh, allowed him to work here as my assistant for a short while, and I thank you for that. You know, it was a blessing to me personally and professionally. We, we worked well together, and his faith grew from being around our youth group. When we would be in financially hard times during that situation, we wouldn't know exactly where the money was coming from, but there was always just enough money to pay our bills. Now, it wasn't, uh, you know, lots of it, but it was just enough. We'd, uh, we'd not be expecting a reimbursement check in the mail, and we'd be wondering how we're going to pay this bill, and suddenly there was a reimbursement check for exactly what we needed. I mean, crazy things happened. It was pretty awesome. Then, you know, after patience and prayer and hard work, Chris got a job, and he actually got a job in the field he was pursuing. God has continued to bless us. The company that he works for, they're like family. They would do anything for us, and they help us out, and they're, they're wonderful people. And I just give God credit for us going through that, because without that, I don't know where we'd be. You know, we wouldn't have, he wouldn't have had the opportunity to work for these people and be where he is. So I just, I just have to give God praise for that. No matter uh, what we're dealing with at that, uh, no matter what we were dealing with at that time, God did provide all our needs. And he did provide needs, not wants. We had enough to pay bills and eat, but, you know, we didn't have money to go to movies every week. But, you know, God did provide. It was amazing. I don't worry about things quite like I used to. Sure, things still go wrong and things happen in life, but what I have learned from that experience is that while I want to be like my grandmother in a lot of ways, I do not want to worry like she did. I want to allow God to come into every single aspect of my life, and I want to allow him to be in control, to provide me with the things I need in life, and I want to learn to live by the old adage, let go and let go. If you will, look in your Bibles uh, with me real quick. Um, we're going to look at Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 through 34. If I can find it in my own Bible. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more important than food and the body more important than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store, store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to his life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the lilies of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? 
For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all of these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. I always like that part, that uh, tomorrow will worry about itself. We get so caught up in all of our worry and all of our stress that we actually forget our current state of being and we overlook the blessings that we have right now. Now, I'm going to make my husband really proud of me for doing this, um, but I'm going to quote one of his favorite movies. And if you haven't seen it, I do suggest Kung Fu Panda. It is a great movie. But there's, there's a scene where the, the little star, Poe the panda, is stressing out about being ch uh, chosen as the dragon warrior. And he's comparing himself to the other Kung Fu masters. Um, and uh, he's approached by the oldest Kung Fu master, Master Uguay, who is an old turtle. And he shares this advice. Po, you are too concerned with what was and what will be. There's a, there's a saying, yesterday is history, tomorrow is a mystery, but today is a gift. That is why it is called the present. We can become far too overwhelmed with our worry and fear of what is coming down, and we forget to see what God has blessed us with in the moment, and we carry our burdens with us throughout life. So I told you my talk was interactive, but I need a volunteer. I need a volunteer. Oh, Rebecca is going to volunteer. Thank you. <laughs> so, I'm mean, just gonna have to talk loud. Just face everyone. So, this is Rebecca. Rebecca, say hello. hello. All right, so we have an empty basket, so I'm gonna let you do that. For you guys, you're gonna have to participate. I need you to kind of do what Cynthia had us do earlier, but I need more of you to do it. Tell me some of your burdens and your worries. I remember earlier we had we had cancer. Okay, so we had that one. What else we got? What are you worried about? What are you burdened for? Children. Finances. Finances. Work. Work. What else you got? Parents. Parents. Okay. Surgery. Money. Surgeries. Yes. I feel the burdens. It's all there. So is this getting a little heavier? Yeah, this is getting a little heavier. I'm gonna give you this. I worry about my my dog. Maybe. <laughs> See, you, you have worries too. Worry about all of this. All of these are gonna be burdens. Burdens that we carry through life that we don't allow God to take control of. We continually fuss, and we continually worry, and we just, just can't let go. But eventually, we have all of the stuff that really shouldn't be there, and suddenly, we're carrying it around constantly. Now, Rebecca, if I were to ask you to hold that straight out like this, how long could you do that? Uh, I don't know. Not real long, right? It's pretty heavy. When we tend to carry around our burdens like this, it doesn't do us any good because we're not giving God control. I want to offer you something. Okay? I want, I want to know if you would accept Jesus. How light is that? Very light. Very light. Jesus is much lighter than our burdens. Thank you. When we truly accept Jesus into our lives, it, it just has this peace that comes with it. If we really believe that God is in charge, why do we stress out quite so bad? Why do we stress? We're going to look at one more verse, uh, Matthew 11, 28 through 30, which says, Come to me, all you, who, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I read this, and I reread this, and I kept looking at the scripture, and I summed it up to mean this. 
believe. Acknowledge your sins and I will freely give you forgiveness and peace. Take upon you my will for your life and follow me. And peace will fill your life. To be yoked is to be bonded. You know how oxen are yoked? They have this big thing over their necks and they're, they're, they're put together to be yoked so that they go in the same way at the same time. If we're bonded and yoked with Jesus, we're going his way and we're bonded with him. And to be bonded with him, he is sharing those burdens. It means we don't bear them alone. We don't bear those worries alone. One of my favorite verses when I get stressed out is Philippians 4, 6 through 7. I'm sure I don't have to look this up. Cynthia could quote it for me. <laughs> but it says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So I told you I was a little nervous when we started this. You know, I was nervous right up until Cynthia and Miss Becca prayed with me. I wasn't nervous after that. I was worried about it. I wasn't worried after that. Because they reminded me, hey, guess what you're talking about today? Dilla, stop worrying about it. Stop worrying about it. Don't be anxious about anything. Why? Because God is right there with you. He knows and he has a wonderful plan for us, even if we don't fully understand it. I am positive that when I went through my situation a few years ago, I had no idea that God was going to turn me in the direction that I am, that God was going to put my husband in the place that he was at. But we just had to let go. We just had to let him take that situation. Take his will for your life and allow him to change your perspective on worry. Find that peace and that freedom that comes from knowing Jesus, and he will give you rest if you seek him and trust him. We will know that he brings the peace, and he brings us knowledge that he's right there with us and will never leave or forsake us. Amen.